Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, the Planet Eater, Devourer of Worlds, first appeared in 1966's Fantastic Four number 48 from Marvel Comics. He was a new breed of character, not a street thug or a mustache twirling caricature. He was a cosmic being with motivations beyond anything like it before. He was inspired by the Bible, as was his angel, his herald, from Lee and Kirby. He is Galactus. His story's evolved over time, and so we'll do our best here to break it all down in an easy-to-understand way, and so you'll be prepared for his entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Before we begin, I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. Don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week just like this one. Alright, let's get on to this video. To understand who Galactus is, one must understand theoretical astrophysics and archaeoastronomy. You see, the Marvel Omniverse is a cluster of universes and galaxies that are not just the 616 and its various pocket dimensions, it's our world too, and every TV show's world that we enjoy on Disney+, Plus and Netflix, and cable, it's everything. This world that we know has had multiple incarnations. At one point, everything in the Omniverse, all matter and energy and time were consolidated into something called the Singularity, infinitely dense and infinitely small. The Singularity burst outwards in a big bang, creating the universe as everything was flung far and wide into the nothingness. Eventually, it all crashed back in on itself in a big crunch, which once again became a singularity, which exploded outwards yet again and again and again for many times thus far. Galactus is from the previous incarnation of our world, a time before our time. Odin once told a tale to a grand cosmic jury of an ancient dying world, a utopian fabled and magnificent planet named Ta, which was home to a mortal named Galan with an E. It would change later to Galan with an A. Galan took a small crew and embarked on a journey through space at the center of the universe, a place where space and time ended, a supermassive black hole consuming all. The universe as they knew it was dying in its big crunch, and here, at the end of this universe, at the end of everything, a being beyond comprehension spoke, a being called the sentience of the universe, a previous incarnation of infinity who was eternity's sister, and it cradled him as the last embers of the universe died out, and gave rise with a new big bang to a new universe, our universe, and rising from its ashes, the big bang explosion flung that primordial matter far and wide, the phoenix force was flung out, and it flung Galen with his ship outwards, a cocoon of protection which was aimlessly cast adrift in the silent loneliness of this new space. In his ship, Galen created for himself a suit of armor, something with which he could channel and control his new power cosmic. He ultimately, after billions of years, emerged as Galactus. It's said that Galactus appears to each world he destroys in a form that they comprehend. His egg was once again transformed into a ship of vast proportions that he christened Tatu, named after his home planet. But his tale was not always one which spanned universes. In fact, in Thor 169, we learned that Ta was suffering from a massive plague which had wiped out untold billions. The few who remained took one last journey into the sun to die by their own hands. And it killed all aboard the vessel except Galen, who was imbued with the power cosmic from the solar radiation. So instead of crossing a bridge between universes, he was the creation of an ancient sun. At first, he was happy to eat non-sentient energy and planets, but over time, his hunger consumed him. It overpowered his morals, and he'd eat fully inhabited planets without regard. He eventually found a planet that he wanted to eat called Zen La, a planet which was home to Norrin Rad, the heroic Zenlavian who offered his own life to spare his planet, and it worked. And with that act, Norrin Rad became Silver Surfer, the first herald of Galactus. Silver Surfer found Earth at one point, but ended up helping the Watcher in the Fantastic Four drive him away. As punishment, Galactus banished Silver Surfer to Earth. He returned to Earth one time, chasing a new herald named Terex. All of Earth's heroes rallied against Galactus. It was Doctor Strange, though, who made him feel pain. The hurt of all those souls who had died by his hand on all of those untold numbers of planets. But then, they decided to help the dying Galactus to live, convinced by Reed Richards that it was the right thing to do. So they fed him as guardian energy, right from Thor's hammer. And he survived, just as Frankie Ray says, Hey, let me be the new herald now that Terex has just died. Later, in a fight with Ego the Living Planet, Thor is able to use that same as guardian energy from his hammer to drive Galactus Galactus off and save the Wanderers, beings without a home, some of the first victims of Galactus himself. In Fantastic Four, Reed Richards tells of a time when the Watcher came before him and told him that Galactus is neither good nor evil. He's in fact neutral, and Reed, one of the smartest beings on Earth-616, concluded that the apparent evil of his actions are not evil at all, and so they must be part of a greater good, some grand cosmic plan for the universe and for reality itself, beyond good and evil. And I'll reveal what that true purpose is at the end. 
During the original Secret Wars, Galactus tried to confront the Beyonder head on, but was beat back. And then he was just kind of stood around for a while while everyone else fought. But here we get a good look at his ship, which is basically a Mobius strip. But Doom discovered that he was building one of his machines to eat Battleworld. Another time, as Galactus hovered ominously over the Shi'ar homeworld, Louise Simonson and legions of heroes defeat him, relegating him to this purest, most vulnerable form, which is true energy. His energy became a second son for Homeworld, but the Watcher ominously said that a universe without Galactus means we'll all be very, very sorry. Galactus' helmet, a massive skull inside, once crashed down on Earth. And Reed Richard ascertained that this was a murder Galactus from elsewhere in the universe, because theirs was dead. The heroes came to learn that with Galactus' death came the release of an evil cosmic entity, a destroyer of the Omniverse named Abraxas. No longer contained by eternity, Abraxas was sent into the cosmos to destroy literally everything. It took the combined awesome might of Franklin and Valeria, the Richards kids, to resurrect Galactus. And with the ultimate nullifier, they're able to, well, nullify all of the destruction that Abraxas caused, making it really something that never happened. And in Stormbreaker, the saga of Beta Ray Bill, we learned that Galactus ate Corbinite, Bill's home planet. And we later learned that he also ate Sakaar. In 2005, Human Torch as a herald of Galactus, along with Quasar and the rest of the Fantastic Four, reverted Galactus back to his human form. But he was still hungry, so the thing took him out for hot dogs on Yancey Street. Galen realized humans indomitable spirit are fierce need to fight back the darkness of entropy, and so he exiled himself to a dimension beyond where the spirit of Galactus would actually take a while to locate him. Hercules had Galactus, Circe, Thor, Silver Surfer, and Venus form the God Squad to help bring down the anti-god known as the Chaos King. Later, the Fantastic Force created a time travel machine from a dead Galactus to send them back to New World. Then massive wars like Annihilation War tore a hole in reality called the Fault, which was a gateway from the 616 world to the Cancerverse. And the battle to keep them at bay drew in every race and every cosmic empire, even the cosmic abstracts of the universe entered the fray. But the Cancerverse creatures created a Galactus engine, a weaponized supergiant analog to the 616 Galactus, to puncture the rift and enter our world. But the rift closed and the world was saved. In 2013's The Hunger, Galactus 616 merged with Galactus, his ultimate Marvel version but he was defeated and trapped in the negative zone where it was thought he could die of starvation. He then went on to be a major part of Ultimates by Al Ewing in which he became the life bringer, its opposite, a being who would bring life to dead planets. And it wouldn't be until five years later in Infinity Countdown that Galactus changed to his previous Eater of Worlds makeup. And for a couple different versions, we have in 2005 the Marvel Zombie series, which saw Galactus overcome by zombies who ate him and ate his power cosmic. With Galactus dead, the seven zombies became the collective known as the Galacti, a pluralized hive mind of cosmic zombies traveling the cosmos for planets with brains to eat. And in 2017 in Ultimates Volume 2, Galactus brought the group together to form the Eternity Watch to save eternity from the first firmament. In 2018, Donnie Cates has a future Galactus make the Cosmic Ghost Rider his herald in a bid to stop Thanos' systematic annihilation of everything. Except, well, in a final showdown, he lost his head to the Mad Titan King Thanos. But actually, this wasn't the first time he was defeated by Thanos. It also happened in Infinity Gauntlet. To aid in his search for eatable worlds, Galactus has granted a portion of the power cosmic to a select few, his servants, his heralds, who would seek out new life and, especially in the case of Norrin Rad, help him avoid these habitable worlds if he could. He's had a host of elementally inspired heralds over time, like Fire Lord, Airwalker, Terex, then there was Nova, Morg, Aunt May the Golden Oldie, even Dazzler at one point, and Rom the Space Knight. Captain Sulu, George Takai, voiced Galactus on the Superhero Squad show back in the day, and in 2007's live-action Fantastic Four film, subtitled Rise of the Fantastic Four, Galactus is a, well, kind of like a stormy cloud, but Kevin Feige will have his comic book form on display when he debuts in Marvel's MCU Phase 5. In Earth Acts by Alex Ross, Galactus is keeping the Celestials in check. These ancient beings, which were created by the first firmament, would use planets as eggs to give birth to new Celestials, and if there were too many in the universe, it would be destroyed. He was devouring these worlds to kill those eggs and the celestial seeds in order to save the universe. We also have a story, which is non-canon, about a teenager named Gali, daughter of Galactus, whose real name is Galacta. She feeds on non-native biomass. Tom Brevert said she's not part of continuity. And in the last Galactus story, the end of the universe, and his true purpose, his greater purpose that we learned decades ago is beyond good and evil, is this. At the end of the universe, he battles and defeats the Watcher. Galactus has finally sucked all the life and the energy out of the universe, and Galactus, in that moment, realizes his true purpose. 
He takes his helmet off, and all the energy he's eaten over the eons explodes outwards, and it is he that gives birth to the next universe. As the sentience carried him from his universe to ours, Galactus becomes the heir, and this is his ultimate destiny. And that's a wrap on this one, my friends. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be part of all of our videos new and old. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.